I shall make Nilfgaard great again! My dynasty will reign for one thousand years and longer. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime girl. This is your fears on the other line. Baby, my heart's on fire. Guys, today is special. It's very special, kinda special time, so sit back and smile, I'll make it worth your while. Guys, today not only this is my 10th, yes, you heard right, 10th video, but I also got something exquisite to share with you. For quite some time now, I had this irresistible urge to create an ultimate deck, a deck destroyer to be more precise, that would drive any opponent out there furious. A deck that's not about points, points are for amateurs, but a set of cards that sole goal is to destroy your opponent's deck to a degree that simply in the third round there are no cards for him to draw. Obviously, Gwent in its current state does not offer any way to do that on a regular basis. A certain criteria have to be met in order to achieve this precise state of events. But this deck I'm about to show you tries its best to do just that. When I first started making this deck, I thought that there's no way that an ultimate deck destroyer can exist without the lockdown ability. But after a few tests I ran, it was kinda obvious that double Vilgefortz at the end is a much better way to go. The thing with this deck is, there is no strict precise card succession order in which you have to play them. There is no telling this card goes in the first and this card goes in the third round. There's just one regulation to rule them all, and that is, winning the first round is of the utmost importance. Because if you fail to do that, you will most likely lapse in your strife to deprive your opponent's deck of all of the cards actually. You've got Matahari, Isbel, Stregobor, two Viper Witchers plus a potential another one from Artorius Vigo, You've got Trahern, you've got Cantarella and Hangate Sword, and this combo, if played right, usually with the Courier card, can win the game in certain circumstances on its own. And obviously you also have Tibor Egebracht, and he can help you with depriving your opponent's deck of cards as well. You basically have at least 10 cards that are somewhat capable of destroying cards right out of your opponent's deck. Still, it's kinda hard to deliver. Fortunately, there are many ways for your opponent to unwillingly help you. You see, many a deck usually possess certain amount of cards that can thin it. And whether we are talking about the Royal Decree or Call of the Forest, or a Vivaldi Bank, or a Matahari, or any other card that summons something from the deck. For example, Ceres Uncrate spawning uh, Dramont Shield Maidens in the melee row, which is a combo that does see a lot of play lately, is one of those cards that can help you a lot, especially if you're able to destroy his Lippigadmont right out of his deck. Which is a situation I experienced the last game I played with this deck. I destroyed his Lippy with Trahern and he forfeited it right away in rank it. On the other hand, this deck is vulnerable against any deck with a high and quick burst ability. Talking about Skellige, Gedinate, the Skellige scenario, is probably the biggest counter to this deck I've seen so far because it literally adds around 30 points on your opponent's side of the board in one turn, usually. And like I said, this deck is not about amassing a large number of points, it's about staying in the game while your opponent had to pass a long time ago. 
Anyways, so whenever you face second win Skellige with this deck, be on your guard. I have to admit, this deck is one of the most complicated decks I've shared with you guys so far. It requires a certain degree of mastery. Don't expect to jump with this deck right into rankings and start winning one game after another right away. You have to be comfortable with the cards you possess and you have to be aware of the situations that may enable you to profit from their abilities in a most favorable way, you know. You know uh, what Kenny Rogers sang. You gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away. Okay, great song by the way, to play cards to. Anyways, let me show you what do I actually mean by that mambo jumbo I've just spelled. So uh, let's go and let's make Nilfgaard great again. So who's gonna be my scapegoat this time? With all due respect, obviously, because I might actually lose this game. Long have we tolerated it's Skellige for seeing a ritual. Well, unless we will be able to somehow take care of Lippy out of his deck, then it's gonna be very hard. But I think we are not without chances here. Yes. Well, no Lippy here. So let's just destroy. Let's destroy Uncrate Longship. I think now's the time to banish Roach. We follow Letho's lead. Come here. Come get a heart, a bear hawk. <laughs> and let's banish something else as well. To get our hands dirty. Yeah, Savage Bear it was. He probably already has uh, Lippy in his hand, so... Uh... Can be easily. Oh, or does he? Lippy is out of the way, and so are his chances on winning this game. Just kidding. He's actually in quite a good spot still. I'm actually thinking here if I should use uh, strategic withdrawal on Traher here. Well, I'm thinking about it. I can help you if you wish. Huh? 
I think we have to pass, unfortunately. Because 20 points could be pretty hard for us in one or two turns. Let's pass here. And I have to hope here that uh, he will want to continue this game. But my draw is exceptionally bad, I can't believe this to be honest. So he'll definitely will because he has only two cards left in his deck. <laughs> Make me beg. All right. I wish I had Cantarella, but uh, right now, we, from now on, she will be pretty much useless in this matchup with one card remaining in his deck. Well, uh, let's just prepare our ground for uh, for a chance at winning this round because otherwise. We're done. Yeah. Huh? I live to serve you. I mean, how bad? <laughs> how bad are my draws lately? There's nothing I can do, can do now with Isbel either. All right. Make but let's just try our best here. His last card in the deck was the Bear Master. Well, let's keep a cool head here and let's focus because. There aren't really many options for us. Can you smell it? Victory is on the wing. Man, this is unbelievable. I guess let's use Hangate Sword 
on the bear master but I don't have any beasts to use it on good lord but even you see even if as bad draw as we got this game it's you still have a chance at winning in the stake stars reflected in a pond for the night sky by the way what uh, Vilgefors just said is uh, my favorite or one of my favorite quotes from Gwent you you mistake stars reflected in a pond for the night sky in the pond for the night sky Sorry, I did it absolutely wrong, and I think we are... Quite the menial task. Well, <laughs> this is very, very... Uh, close game, but I think we actually got this. Not your lucky day. because he has nothing left to draw in the third round and we are drawing three cards so we obviously won but this was so close I can't believe we did this actually <laughs> yeah well I got I have three cards and he has none so uh, I think it uh, doesn't matter much and thank you for the game bro it was very close but we, in the end we managed to deliver the exact thing we wanted all along and that is depriving his deck of all playable cards of or for of all cards for that matter and we managed to win in the end because we had three cards and he had none Well guys, what a thriller it was. We managed to win despite losing in the first round. And that with this deck happens quite rarely. Like I said, this deck is not easy to master. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, I don't think at all I mastered it myself. It's pretty clear that uh, current meta does not benefit these kind of decks much. But I guess until the Master Mirror expansion comes out, this is the next best thing in terms of uh, deck destroyers. Anyways, if some of you got any experience with similar decks, please feel free to share with me your opinion on this one. I mean, there are quite a few changes I am still considering, like adding Ihuarax, but he just does not sync well with all those 9 provision cards in the deck, so... Uh, still, please let me know what do you think about this monstrosity of a deck. Next time, I promise, I'll do something quite opposite and I'll try to show some meta deck. With that being said, thank you all very much for watching. Thank you all for all the support I've received from you guys. That's what keeps me going on with these videos. Please let me know in the comments if this deck is too much or if it's still quite acceptable. And once again, this is Orpheus and I'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye bye.